Hey there. If you've already accessed the map and want to follow along the tutorial, remember. If you aren't a Felt user, you must click on the Felt logo in the upper left corner and then click on Sign Up. If you're already a Felt user, you'll have to duplicate this map and then you'll be able to work on it and follow the steps. Let's get started. Did you know that London has 150 protected parks like Hyde Park and Richmond Park? In addition, England has more than 400,000 heritage buildings, ranging from medieval castles to cathedrals, Roman fortresses, or even Cold War bunkers. However, according to Historic England, more than 50,000 hectares are at risk of being lost due to neglect, decay, or inappropriate development. Yorkshire and the Humber is the region with the most heritage at risk, with nearly 13,000 hectares. Now, you might think that creating a map with all this information is a very complex task. However, we're about to prove you otherwise. Here are all the steps so that you can recreate this very map yourself. Let's start with the first one, data collection. First of all, access the link in the description and download the attached file. Once you have the file, unzip it and that will give you access to a folder with all the layers relevant to this map. We'll start by creating a base map with all the collected heritage layers. To add a layer, you must select all the files with the same name and drop them all together on your felt map. In a matter of seconds, the layer will appear. Once you have all the layers on your map, we must arrange them correctly. Simply drag and drop them into the corresponding place. In this case, we'll start with the heritage areas at risk by region, followed by the conservation areas, then the registered parks and gardens, then the world heritage sites, followed by heritage at risk, and finally, the regions of England. Next, we'll modify the style of each of the layers of our map. To do so, we'll go to the editing mode, where we'll use the different visualization tools available. In addition, we'll add a caption to each layer from the texts attached in the description of this video. Starting with the heritage areas at risk by region, we'll go to the editing mode, and in type, we'll select color range. In color by, We'll select the following field, area ha underscore su. In steps, we'll select continuous, which is accessed here. And in fill, we'll select the yellow to red color ramp with a white stroke with a width of one pixel. For casing, the same white and a width of five pixels, a 40% opacity, and position above water and roads. For the conservation areas, we'll keep the type simple and a purple color for the fill. Stroke and casing set to none, opacity at 23%, and position above water and roads. For the registered parks and gardens, we'll select the type categories, then the color by grade, stroke and casing none, opacity 80%, and position above water and roads. Next, we'll go to the legend tab and color each category with a different color. This green for grade 1, this second type of green for grade 2 star, and this third type of green for grade 2 without the star. For world heritage sites, we'll use the type symbol. In fill, we'll use purple with a 15% transparency, and for a stroke, the same purple with a 1.5 line thickness. Casing none opacity 100%, and position above water and roads. For the heritage at risk layer, in type we'll also use simple, fill none, stroke a red color with a thickness of 1.0, casing none, opacity 80%, and position above water and roads. Finally, for the regions layer, we'll also use a simple type with a fill equal to none, a black stroke with a thickness of 1.0, casing white with a thickness of 4.0, opacity 80% and position above water and roads. For labels, we'll use the following field, RGN22NM, size 11.0, black color, and a white halo with a thickness of 1 pixel, and a style medium. Finally, to add the descriptions to each layer, we'll go once again to the editing mode, then to legend, and copy-paste the texts that are in the description of this video. After performing all the previous steps, we should have our final map, starting with the regions layer, where each one should have a label on it, then the heritage areas at risk layer, followed by the world heritage sites, 
then registered parks and gardens, conservation areas, and finally the heritage areas at risk by region. And that's it. You now have your own map of England's heritage.